Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, so I'm recording a video to explain on how can we answer the exercise for this case study. Okay, the EERM exercise. Okay, this exercise is for you to prepare for the uh, our written test and also the final exam. Okay, so here we have ICT two hundred introduction to database management system tutorial case study xyz corporation okey untuk untuk uh, menjawab soalan ini apa yang kamu perlukan adalah kita ada satu case study jadi untuk menjawab kamu perlu study the case okey study the case study you kena understand apakah yang di disampaikan dalam case study ini okey so there are a lot of things that been written here okay dalam case study ni so what you need to do adalah kamu kena baca setiap satu-satu ni apa yang nak disampaikan dan apakah maklumat yang dapat kamu ambil daripada setiap ayat ni okay setiap ayat ni dia ada maklumat-maklumat dia supaya kita dapat memahami apakah business rule yang terlibat okay untuk uh, ada beberapa step untuk kita menjawab soalan ini okay First of course lah kita kena baca okay so I hope you have read all of this uh, case study okay and then understand what uh, this this case study is about okay dia berkenaan dengan apa cuba fahamkan dulu and then dekat bawah ni cuba tengok uh, point by point apakah uh, maklumat yang cuba nak disampaikan okay then after you have read all of this uh, to answer is uh, the the to, to solve this type of question this case study okay what you can do is so i provide here solution uh, what can we do the first one is we need to identify what are the entities and attributes involved in this case study okay we need to identify entity entities and attributes involve okay. you have identified the attribute and uh, sorry the entity and attributes next uh, you need to identify the specialization hierarchy specialization hierarchy okay i hope you still remember what does it mean by hierarchy okay so in hierarchy we have super type and sub type parent and child kan super type and sub type okay try to identify uh, which entity is super type and which uh, entity is sub type okay Ke, kita kena baca betul-betul uh, maklumat yang disampaikan dalam case study itu so every inch of words uh, will determine the business rule so that we can know what are the entity attribute and the hierarchy So when we have got the super tag and sub information, of course, there will be inheritance involved. Okay, inheritance. Okay, akan ada inheritance bila ada parent and child ni. Okay, inheritance meaning a uh, child dia akan inherit attribute yang ada di parent dan juga relationship yang involved di parent dengan entity. Okay, so because of that, a uh, super tag FK akan jadi uh, subtype punya FK ataupun foreign key. And then subtype will have PK and FK from the super type. Okay. So meanings uh, PK PK from super type will be FK for sub type okay and sub type will has pk fk okay so sub type will have the same pk and fk and then that pk and fk are coming from super type All right then we'll have Okay, so next what we need to identify is 
uh, when we have this hierarchy, next we need to identify uh, the disjoint or overlap constraint. Ataupun uh, dalam ERD nanti kita akan letak simbol D or O. Okay. So disjoint. Uh, disjoint maksudnya uh, parent, uh, sorry, subtype tu dia akan berbeza. Maksudnya dia tak, uh, subtype tu akhirnya akan uh, dimiliki oleh salah satu sahaja. Dia tak akan jadi kedua-duanya. Manakala kalau overjoint, uh, subtype boleh jadi untuk uh, satu ataupun lebih subtype. Okay. Maksudnya, Uh, komponen ataupun uh, elemen dalam entiti parent tu dia boleh kalau disjoin maksudnya salah satu dia tak boleh uh, jadi ahli untuk uh, kesemua subtype dia kalau overlap maksudnya entiti ataupun uh, value dia dalam parent uh, supertype boleh menjadi uh, value ataupun entiti untuk setiap uh, subtype yang ada itu ada maksud overlap ok untuk uh, maklumat yang lebih spesifik, kamu boleh refer kepada slide lah. Okay. Then we also can identify the the constraint ataupun the discriminator. Okay. Constraint. Uh, whether it is partial, partial or complete. Okay. Kita boleh tahu juga. Adakah uh, setiap data di supertype perlu menjadi data di subtype itu apakah, adalah apa yang dimaksudkan dengan complete ok so bila complete ni akan ada uh, double line double line mana kalau untuk partial dia akan jadi uh, single line ok ok so kamu tengok adakah uh, setiap data di value supertype tu perlu menjadi value di di subtype okey kalau perlu maksud kalau setiap data di supertype perlu jadi value di subtype kita ambil complete kalau tak perlu kita ambil partial okey untuk partial kita akan lukis sebagai single line manakala untuk complete kita akan lukis sebagai double line di dalam kita punya uh, EERM nanti okey so that is for the second step Next, after you have identified all of this, we need to draw the ERM. E -E -M. So, kita dah ada information ni. Kita dah ada entity and attribute and then the hierarchy punya information. Next is we draw the EERM. Draw EERM. Okay, so in drawing EERM, what we need to do is to look at the connectivity. connectivity or relationship between the entities okay check whether it is one to many or one to one or many to many okay kita dah tahu kalau one to many okay no problem and then uh, one to one no problem and then when we come to many to many Okay, when many to many, what we need to do is we need to create uh, many to many uh, must create a composite table or bridge, bridge table. Okay, to bridge uh, to bridge uh, this many to many entities relationship. Okay, we cannot have many to many. Kita kena create satu bridge table di pertengahan antara satu table dengan table yang satu lagi. Bila ada many to many relationship. Okay, so how can we get this information is based on the business rule. You can get this from business rule. Okay. Then, uh, after you have get the connectivity or relationship with What we need to do next is uh, to identify whether it is the participation. Participation. Okay. Participation whether it is optional or mandatory. Mandatory. 
mandatory okey tengok adakah relationship tu option dia optional or mandatory okey so kalau mandatory we put the line kalau optional kita letak simbol o okey sekejap lagi kita akan tengok based on uh, the case study that was given to us at the beginning okay so now we have is uh, the step lah uh, step that you need to do in answering the case study question okay must follow this step okay okay next so we have know the step what now we want to answer okay answer so answer first we do the step one identify identify entities put the singular entity and attribute okay so now kita, kita akan move to the identify entity and attribute right so in identifying entity uh, sorry entity attribute we can look at the if entity entity okay entity is a noun okay. noun something that can be described Uh, paragraph tu dekat teks tu kalau dia nyatakan something and then benda tu boleh ada description dia ada dis ada description yang menggambarkan uh, entity tersebut okay so meaning that is an entity kamu boleh dapatkan dia okay kalau attribute block uh, the description the description of the entity okey so benda yang me, me, menggambarkan entity tersebut adalah attribute okey manakala uh, benda yang ada penggambaran okey ada di describe something adalah entity okey so we look at the paragraph here okey the xyz corp Frequent flyers have been complaining to ABC airport officers about the poor organization at the airport. As a result, the officers have decided that all information related to the airport should be organized using DBMS and you have been hired to design the database. Your first task is to organize the information about the airplanes that are stationed and maintained at the airport. The relevant information is as follows. So kita tahu lah kita perlu disebabkan ada report, ada complaint so kita di hire untuk membuat database uh, menggunakan DBMS. So dia bagilah description uh, database, uh, description business rule. Okay, this is business rule lah yang terlibat dalam airport ni. So kita tengok. Every airplane has its registration number and each airplane is a specific model. So kita copy sini mudah lah ini untuk mudah kalau bila kamu nak menjawab soalan nanti kamu highlight lah kalau ada highlighter kan masa nak jawab test ataupun exam nanti cuba kamu highlight ni untuk tujuan explanation saya copy untuk memudahkan lah kita refer ok so kita tengok sini so it stated here that uh, every airplane has its registration number and each airplane is a specific model So kita tahu, oh, airplane ni adalah entity. Kenapa? Sebab dia ada dia punya description dia. Ada registration number and specific model. Okay, so kita boleh letakkan di sini. Kita boleh senaraikan. So the entity here is airplane and then dia punya attribute adalah uh, registration ah, sorry right. number and model. Ada specific model kan? So kita tahu, alright, okay. So we have the, okay, we have the first entity with its attribute. Okay, now kita tengok balik. Yang kedua apa pula? Okay, kita copy sini. Then, okay. 
the airport accommodates a number of airplanes models and each model is identified by a model number. Maksudnya airport boleh menempatkan beberapa airplane model and each model is identified a model number. Okay, so ni this is the description, model number description dan has a capacity and weight. Capacity and weight also is the description. So meaning here we have model as the entity. Okay, kita ada model sebagai entity. So we put here model and then the entity are model number and also capacity, capacity and weight. So we have the entity model along with its attribute. Okay, so untuk uh, buat skim ni kita panggil ni uh, skema lah. Skema ni kita untuk yang uh, candidate for primary key kita letakkan underline. So you know, alright. So ada yang underline ni adalah candidate lah untuk primary key. Underline. Mana kalau untuk foreign key kita letak star di hujung hujung perkataan tu. Okay. Sekejap kita tengok untuk foreign key pula. Kita dapatkan dulu setiap entity. Next, the third. Uh, description to categories. Okay, so kita tengok sini apa yang dimasukkan ni. This corporation has two categories of employees named as technicians and a group of traffic controller. So when we read about this statement, we know that employee ada two categories which is technicians and traffic controller. So from this we know that employee is a super type and then technicians and traffic controller are the sub type. Okay, so di sini kita tahu. Oh, okay. So employee adalah super type and then dia tak nyatakan kan apakah attribute dia. Jadi kita leave it blank first. Okay, kita identify sebab dia tak nyatakan lagi. Okay. So kita tahu employee super type and then if I'm not mistaken dia ada lepas tu dia akan mention uh, attribute for each type of employee. Okay sekarang kita tengok yang ni pula eh. Okay sekarang tengok yang ni. Dia akan uh, apa ke statement dia. A number of technicians work at the airport. Okay a number of technicians work at the airport. You need to store the name, social security number, SSN, address, phone number and salary of each technician. Okay so di sini kita tahu. Oh technician ni adalah entity and then dia ada, sebab dia ada dia punya description dia. So description ni adalah attribute dia. Store the name, social security number and so on. Okay. Ini adalah attribute untuk technician. So we know. Alright. So we got the entity. We have the first subtype from the super type which is technician. And then its attributes are store the name. Social security number, SSN, address, phone number, and salary. Okay. So, uh, my advice for you is to, when you want to create a table, add in the entity attribute, make sure, for me, I, I like to use the uh, uppercase letter. Okay, uppercase letter. So that we can identify, differentiate between uh, what are the name of the entity or the table and its attributes or column with the data itself, the value itself. Okay. Kadang-kadang value yang dimasukkan tu dia tak, dia tak ikut uh, sentence case or, low, or lower case kan. Jadi untuk membezakan, lebih mudah membezakan yang mana satu table, yang mana satu entity, yang mana satu column, yang mana satu attribute dengan data yang dimasukkan dalam database kamu tu. Saya lebih suka lah menggunakan uh, apa case punya letter. Okay. So we have ni. Then let's look at the second uh, subtype of employee. Technician, traffic controller. Alright. This one. 
Graphic Controller Traffic controllers must have an annual examination. For each traffic controller, you must store the date of the most recent exam. Okay, so they check out this in traffic controller must have annual exam. Okay. So we put here traffic controller and then the attributes are uh, annual sorry uh, annual medication okay annual medication eh? annual medication exam eh? and then we have a uh, date of the most recent exam so you know, kita letakkan juga uh, date exam lah okay date exam so from there we know we can get uh, which one is the most recent Okay, sebab kita boleh sort dalam database nanti. So, daripada situ kita boleh sort uh, yang the most recent akan duduk di atas sekali. Okay. Next. Uh, Terrific untuk dulu. Okay, this one. Okay. All airport employees, including technicians, belong to a specific union. A union may be joined by many members. Union code and union description must be recorded about the union. Okay, so di sini disebabkan kita ada description untuk union. Union code and union description. So, we know that oh union is an entity. Okay, union ni bukan ya... Uh, Uh, gabungan ini adalah persatuan pekerja okey so daripada sini kita tahu oh, okey union adalah entity so we put here union and then dia punya attribute adalah union code so code and description And then kalau kamu tengok sini, uh, dia juga menyatakan uh, a relation, type of relationship. Okay, so kita akan tengok sekali lagi. Next, kita tengok apakah uh, statement yang lain. Okay, the airport. Okay, this one. The airport runs several number of tests on the airplane to check and make sure that the airplanes are still airworthy. The tests are run periodically and conducted by the airport technicians. So we have a relationship here. Uh, tests and airport technician. One airport technician may conduct one or many tests on airplane. The test on the airplane may be, may be conducted by many technicians at one time. So we know oh, from here we have a uh, test as uh, an entity. Okay, but the test, but under test. Then what else that can we get it? Yang seterusnya, kita tengok yang statement seterusnya. Okay, kita combine je. Kita combine yang ni. Okay, kita ambil yang, sorry, kita ambil yang statement satu lagi untuk dapatkan lebih maklumat berkenaan test. So, each test has a federal aviation administration test number and a maximum possible score. Okay, so di sini boleh nyatakan apakah Uh, description untuk uh, test test number, name and maximum possible score ok so disebabkan dia ada di sini kita cut ok kita cut boleh kita cut sikit ni, ni kita letakkan di sini 
uh, kedua punya so test akan ada test number name test name and maximum, maximum possible score ok max score lah alright so that is the attribute for test and during the testing activities run several information need to be recorded such as the date the number of hours that is spent during the test and the score to the airplane receive on the test ok di sini dia adalah sedikit tricky ok sedikit tricky kenapa ok sebab kita baca sekali simpitas lalu kita nampak oh ini juga adalah attribute untuk test ok tapi bukan ok bukan attribute untuk test sebab apa sebab dia nyatakan di sini during the testing activities Maksudnya semasa test tu dijalankan ada beberapa maklumat yang kita simpan okey uh, jadi di sini kita dapat tahu okey testing adalah entity okey manakala atribut yang dinyatakan seterusnya ni description ni adalah atribut untuk entity testing ni okey jadi kita perlu create uh, testing punya entity and then dah punya atribut adalah Uh, testing date ok testing uh, number of hours and testing hours testing underscore hours and then the score that we see on the test score testing score so ini adalah uh, attribute untuk testing meaning semasa test ni dijalankan ada ada juga uh, data ataupun attribute yang kita kutip ok so it belong under testing ok so next what else oh, ok so this is the last one alright so since this is the last statement kita tengok kita ada berapa entity 1 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ok now we have 8 entities uh, based from the case study so I will save I will save this one first right so kita dah dapatkan dah uh, apa dia punya entity dan juga attribute next is uh, uh, we check again apakah uh, special, uh, specialization hierarchy yang ada dan juga connectivity ok apakah jenis connectivity yang ada kita tengok ok so di sini kita tahu uh, employee adalah super type ok sorry airplane and model ok so airplane is specific model so si specific model mesti ada relationship dengan model ni ok bila relationship dengan model ni meaning sini dia ada specific model kan kita tetapkan di, di sini sebagai specific model model meaning untuk membezakan model kita kita memerlukan model number ok model number untuk reflect dengan primary key primary key, primary key di model punya entity so di sini ke sini oh kita dah ada link dengan dia ok meanings memandangkan model number ini adalah uh, foreign key untuk airplane yang didapati daripada primary key of model so kita letak simbol uh, star di sini tu ok so kita tahu nanti kita nak create table senang lah kan kita tahu so kita ada primary key dalam airplane ada primary key register number and then model number ni adalah foreign key yang mana menunjukkan dia ada relationship dengan model ni ok next kita tengok yang kedua ok employee super type uh, so kita tahu oh employee super type and then dia punya sub type adalah uh, ni sub type sub type ok So, kita tahu, oh, technician and traffic controller adalah subtype kepada employee. Okey, bila kita cakap berkenaan super type and subtype, di entity super type, kita mesti simpan data yang common, data yang sama untuk dipakai oleh kedua-dua subtype ni. Okey, 
Manakala untuk data ataupun atribut yang disimpan oleh sub kedua-dua sub tag sub tag ni adalah mesti sub tag yang unik yang berbeza lah. Okay. So kalau kamu tengok di sini kan uh, employee secara asasnya uh, secara common secara secara realistiknya kan, mesti dia akan simpan name SSN se, apa? social security number address phone number okay ini adalah basic information for employee okay so meanings uh, benda ni kita simpan di employee okay sebab ini adalah perkara basic ini adalah attribute basic untuk setiap kerja setiap kerja mesti ada name social security number address and phone number kan so untuk itu kita tahu so kita simpan di employee okay uh, employee and then di sini kita dah tak simpan data ni meanings. Okay kita angkat and then kita tambah the new one is salary sahaja. Mana kalau untuk uh, traffic controller Okay, so kita okay, kita tengok sini lah. So, membenarkan ini adalah employee. Uh, kita perlu menjadikan social security number lah sebagai primary key dia. Okay, sebab dia unit. So, disebabkan ia adalah primary key, kita underline kan. And then, uh, untuk, teknis, uh, untuk technician pun, untuk membezakan, kita perlu ada uh, SSN ni. Okay, SSN ni masuk di sini comma and then SSN ni adalah primary key untuk technician dan juga foreign key untuk technician so kita letakkan star juga untuk melambangkan ia adalah PKFK ok and then the same thing goes to traffic controller lah ok so di traffic controller pun akan ada social security number mana ia juga adalah primary key dan foreign key untuk traffic controller PKFK ok then untuk union pula hmm, union uh, ok no problem union akan join dengan employee ok cumanya di sini dia cakap a union may be joined by many members ok bila kita nampak perkataan may May ni maksudnya ia adalah optional Sama ada dia join ataupun tak okay. So bila optional kita kena letak simbol O lah nanti Bila kita, kita nak draw uh, ERD lagi kita kena letak simbol O Okay so kita dah check di union uh, Union pun okay And then test pun okay So sekarang I think all the entities uh, Have already been constructed Okay, we have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, kita ada 8 entities. Okay. So, kita ada ada 8 entities dan dan its attribute. Okay, now is the the next step is to uh, draw the EERM. Okay, draw EERM. Okay, nanti yang untuk to ni apa step 2 oh sorry uh, step 2 ni identify the specialization hierarchy ni kita ada ada super tag and set tag and then the inheritance okey nanti kita akan akan tengok untuk disjoint and overlap constraint dan juga uh, partial and complete constraint okey kita akan tengok semasa kita membangunkan EERM kita melukis EERM ni okey so untuk uh, melukis EERM okey kalau kamu buat assignment ataupun report Uh, make sure jangan menggunakan Microsoft Word ataupun PowerPoint okay? Kena menggunakan software-software yang boleh draw EERM ni So macam saya, saya gunakan uh, website draw.io okay? So kita google draw.io Okay, just buka draw.io diagram.net Okay, now since it's the new one so we create new diagram lah Okay, and then I choose blank diagram. Okay, new diagram and then blank diagram. 
double click and then it asks us to save uh, our file lah. so i would like to rename it as uh, xyz underscore eerm okay so that is the name for my file i save it at desktop okay senang nak cari okay bila kita dah siap nanti buku mu boleh cut the the file and paste it in the folder, the correct folder. So, untuk senang untuk kita rujuk, buat masa sekarang ni, letakkan di desktop. Okay, save. Okay, so this is the layout lah for draw.io. Okay, kalau kamu tengok belah kiri ni, ada dia punya shape, shape, shape. And then belah kanan ni adalah dia punya attribute untuk diagram tu. Dan juga kita nak stylekan dia macam mana. Okay. So, sekarang adalah part untuk kita draw. Uh, so, saya akan move here and then choose this one. So, that senang saya nak refer. Okay, kita tengok. Oh, so bawah. Okay, so kita tengok dulu lah. Uh, the first entity is the airplane. Okay, so airplane uh, kita akan okay, tu. Di sini juga ada menyediakan button search untuk shape. So, kita akan draw entity. So, saya search entity lah. Entity. Then enter. So, dia akan bagilah result-result um, yang berkenaan dengan entity. Alright. So, kita nak create new entity. Saya akan select ni lah. Okay, table. So, I can create table here. Okay, so the table name would be airplane. And then the PK we have already known here. Re registration number. REG underscore number. And then we also have PK. The attribute is PK here, which is the model number. I'm oh, sorry, FK, foreign key. Okay, foreign key here. And then, the foreign key is model number. Okay, so, kita dah tengok sini. Alright, so we have uh, these two. Okay, so sini kita boleh delete lah. Okay, kamu boleh delete lah row yang tak berkenaan. Supaya menjimatkan ruang. So, saya select ni. Click delete delete all right so we have our first table here i put it down here okay next so kita dah buat ini kita dah buat table airplane okay next kita tengok uh, kalau boleh kita buat table yang ada relationship dengan table yang kita buat tu dulu okay so since we we have created the airplane table next kita tahu okay so airplane ni ada relation dengan uh, model sebab kita ada model number as foreign key okay tengok saya letak simbol star ni menandakan ianya adalah foreign key untuk model okay so next kita create table model pula click here drag ke bawah okay and then we name it as uh, model and then it's PK is model number um, and then the punya attributes okay, kita ada capacity capacity and weight alright so we have capacity and weight as its attribute okay so I delete yang tak related okay then Bila kita dah buat table, uh, next is kita cuba untuk create dia punya relationship lah. Okay, relationship. So, untuk mendapatkan relationship. Okay, kalau kita tengok sini. Uh, relationship tu adalah this, this one. Connectivity. Look at the connectivity or relationship. Whether it is one to many or one to one or many to many. Okay, so kalau dia many to many, kita kena create bridge table. Alright, so kita tengok. Mm. Every airplane has its registration number and each airplane is a specific model. Okay. And then the airport. The airport accommodates a number of airplanes. Okay. So, maksudnya di bahagian airport ataupun airplanes ni 
uh, adalah banyak lah. Okay, dia akomodate banyak airplanes. So, the airplanes ni banyak. But, dekat model, dia ada each one only. Each model is identified by a model. Okay, each model is identified by a model. So, we have the kind of relationship here is, okay. Hmm. Okay, ni kita nak buat relationship lah. Uh, model. Okay, so model is, uh, sorry, airplane is many but model is one kan. Okay. Hmm. Sebab airport accommodates a number of airplane models. Okay, airplane model. So, di airplane ni dah jadi many. Okay, and then each model is identified by a model. Oh, dia satu je. Okay. So, okay, so relationship dia adalah <coughs> airplane is many and model is one. Okay. Satu lagi clue adalah uh, macam mana kita nak determine the relationship which part is one or many is kalau kamu tengok. Uh, yang ada FK ni adalah many. Okay, yang tak ada FK ni adalah one. So, di sini kita dapat identify, okay, model is one where the, the entity airplane that has key, foreign key uh, is many. Okay, so from here kita create, kita create line lah. Okay. <coughs> kita masukkan line. Okay, so <coughs> kita dah kita dah masukkan line. Then, <coughs> then di line ni kita boleh uh, letakkan dia punya style untuk mengikut uh, kita boleh setkan uh, which one is one, which one is many. Okay, so kita check di sini. Okay, so di sini untuk model is one kan. So this one, okay. And then untuk airplane many. So kita cari crow food. This one Okay So it will be like this lah Okay And then cuba kita tengok dalam kenyataan ni Statement ni Dia tak menyatakan uh, Participation Whether it's optional or mandatory So kita assume it as mandatory Okay selalunya untuk Optional dia akan mention Kalau dia, dia tak mention Kita assume dia sebagai mandatory Okay so kita Disebabkan dia mandatory uh, Kita letakkan simbol ni lah Okay So we have finished for the two entities. Now let's move to the next one. Okay, which is employee here. Okay, so kita click. Now kita akan click uh, a new table. Name as employee. Okay. Employee. And then its attribute PK is SSN. Social security number. And then we have uh, attribute name, address, phone number. Phone number. Okay, kita tak phone number sini. Okay. Alright, so we know that employee is the super type. Okay, so <coughs> we check. Uh, okay, next we have technician as the set type. So we create another table here. Okay, kita create table uh, technician. Okay, then uh, we have PK dia adalah SSN. SSN, but you look here, okay. Uh, SSN adalah PK dan juga FK. Okay, FK. Bila mana ada subtype ataupun composite ataupun bridge table uh, mesti ada PK dan FK daripada super type ok so di sini kita masukkan uh, ok sorry tak nampak PK ni uh, saya letak PK1 FK1 ok so dia punya PK FK adalah SSN Okay, and then dia punya attribute adalah salary sahaja. Salary. Okay. 
Dia punya unique attribute adalah salary Sebabnya attribute yang lain dia kongsi di employee ni Common attribute ada di super type Manakala sub type hanya ada satu unique uh, attribute Which is the salary for technician table So yang ni kita tak guna kita delete Ni pun delete Alright, so we finish this one. Next, kita create table uh, traffic controller pula. Another subtype name as traffic controller. Traffic oh, underscore con controller. Alright, so dia punya PK sama SSN dan SSN ni juga adalah dia punya foreign key. So sama case dengan technician tadi kita letakkan PK1 FK1 Okay Remember lah semua subtype ataupun bridge table Dia mesti ada PK FK daripada super type Sorry Okay And then attribute untuk traffic controller adalah uh, Annual medication Medication dan uh, date exam date underscore exam alright so this will be the attribute name lah for traffic controller it's just key ok alright so row ni tak guna kita delete ok so we have uh, two table here two subtype table that belong under a super type table which is the employee okay so next kita nak tengok what kind of relationship we can put here okay uh, alright hmm. okay first kita letak relationship dulu kita letak uh, apa? line dulu tinggi sangat sikit ok satu lagi Okay, so kita ada relationship kita tahu, okay, bila employee is super type, bawah ni technician and traffic controller is uh, subtype. type Kejap saya tengok boleh drag tak ni? Boleh tak boleh drag? Oh, ni tak boleh drag kalau kita kecilkan. Okay, wait. Sekejap. Kita baca statement dulu, okay. So, okay, kita di sini... Next, bila bila ada involve dengan hierarchy, okay, identify the specialization hierarchy, okay, kita dah kita dah uskawu untuk sebut tak sebut tak kita dah tahu, and then kita, inheritance pun kita dah settle. Next is kita nak tengok dia punya constraint, whether is disjoint or overlap, okay? You all masih remember apakah yang dimaksudkan dengan disjoint ataupun overlap, okay? Cuba tengok balik dalam slide note EERD, EERM. Okay, sorry. Uh, we have this disjoint and overlap. Okay. Disjoint maksudnya untuk satu-satu masa uh, uh, subtype hanya boleh jadi satu saja sama ada technician atau traffic controller. Dia tak boleh jadi dua-dua dalam satu masa yang serentak. Okay. So that is what it mean by disjoint. Manakala kalau overlap dia boleh jadi dua-dua dalam satu masa yang sama serentak. Dia boleh jadi technician dan dia juga boleh jadi traffic controller. That is what it means by overlap. Okay. So, secara logiknya, even though dia tak dinyatak nyatakan di sini, uh, tak nyatakan secara directly, okay, kalau kamu tengok tugasan technician dan traffic controller ni, uh, 
secara logiknya adalah uh, disjoint. Okay. Sebab dia tak boleh jadi technician dan dalam mesin semua dia tak boleh jadi uh, traffic controller. Okay. Dia mesti jadi salah satu sahaja. Okay. Jadi uh, untuk untuk ini kita tahu. Oh, so because of that the the constraint is disjoint. Okay. Saya so, maksimum sikit. Uh, dia punya relationship adalah disjoint. Uh, actually, sorry, saya kena terbalikkan dia punya table ni. Sekejap, saya terbalikkan table sekejap. Sebab next attribute uh, involve dengan technician. Jadi, kita letak yang kosong ni untuk technician. Okay. So kita tahu, oh, uh, employee untuk tugas untuk technician dan traffic controller tidak boleh dijalankan serentak. Okay, dia berbeza dengan contoh dalam slide note yang mana employee boleh jadi student dan juga administrator kan. Itu possible untuk konteks akademisian, akademik. Tapi untuk tugasan employee di airport ni uh, adalah mustahil lah untuk dia melakukan dua tugas kerja ni. Jadi ianya adalah disjoint. Okay, so bila disjoin ni maksudnya kita kena letak simbol D lah. Okay, this one. I put, uh, kena lower case lah, D. So, put it here. Okay. So, kita tahu, oh, it's disjoin. So, it must be either one. Okay, either one. So, bila kita dah identify attribute tu, oh, sorry, subtype tu sebagai uh, disjoint. Okay, so kita kena letak dia punya discriminator. Sebab apa? Sebab dia hanya salah satu. Salah satu, jadi kita kena tambah satu uh, attribute di employee untuk menunjukkan uh, uh, value ataupun data tu belong to traffic controller ataupun technician. Okay, jadi di sini kita kena tambah satu lagi attribute. Okay, so untuk tambah atribut, kamu letak klik anak panah ni. Akan tambah atribut di bawah ni. Sekejap, kat atas sikit. Okay, so kita kena tambah satu lagi atribut untuk differentiate between traffic controller dan technician. Okay, so atribut yang sesuainya adalah uh, employee type lah, okay. Ataupun type. So we know. Uh, so, we have a new attribute name as type to differentiate between traffic controller or technician. Okay, so we have type here. And then when we have type, kita letaklah discriminator sikit text sikit untuk menunjukkan yang ni adalah type. Type. Okay. And then type. Uh, let's say, let's say untuk SQL command Type tu type apa kan uh, So kita nak membezakan type apa Kita letakkan uh, simbol For example, technician kita letak T Okay And then untuk Traffic controller Okay Traffic controller, let's say kita letak TC ya, TC untuk melambangkan traffic controller. So, bila kita masuk data di dalam kita punya table, okay, kita run SQL, type TC, so kita tahu, oh, dia akan ambil traffic controller. Type T, so just technicians, okay. So, that's how we determine it lah, alright. Next, kita tengok apa lagi yang kita perlu tentukan. Uh, alright, next. Okay, next one is constraint whether it's partial or complete. Okay, partial or complete. Partial or complete ni maksudnya um, adakah 
uh, setiap employee ni setiap employee hanya untuk traffic controller ataupun technician uh, itu yang dimaksudkan dengan sing, uh, sorry partial ataupun complete okey adakah semua data dalam employee ni dia mesti kategori traffic controller ataupun traffic technician okey so kalau mesti ke semua kita letak complete yang mana complete adalah double line kita kena letak double line okey tapi kalau ianya si, uh, tak complete partial maksudnya tak semua data atau pekerja dalam employee ni perlu menjadi traffic controller ataupun technician kalau itu kita letakkan single line okey so kalau kamu tengok di sini uh, organisasi sebagai airport ni of course lah airport ni dia punya satu organisasi yang besar kan airport pun dah besar so of course pekerja dia pun mestilah banyak so tak semestinya employee pekerja ni hanya ada traffic controller dan technician sahaja ok mesti ada pekerja lain mesti ada administrator, cleaner uh, and then and then the type of job lah kan tak semestinya hanya terhad kepada traffic controller dan technician ok so itu secara logiknya jadi dengan itu kita tahu oh so dia punya constraint sini adalah single jadi bila single kita letakkan uh, single line lah ok ok kita letak uh, line sini di bawah D ni bila ada satu line kita tahu oh partial ok partial daripada employee ni adalah traffic controller partial daripada employee adalah technician ok not all employee must be traffic controller ataupun technician that's what it means ok So kita dah settle untuk employee tapi di sini jangan lupa untuk tambah uh, attribute dalam employee which is type. Okay. Jadi kita settle untuk itu. Next kita tengok pula untuk uh, union. Okay. Contribute contribute pun dah settle. Union pula. All airport employees including technicians belong to a specific union. A union may be joined by many members. Okay, di sini ada keyword maybe. Maybe meaning dia adalah optional. Okay, sama ada dia join ataupun tak join. Dia boleh. By many members. Union code and union description must be recorded about the union. Alright, so kita tengok di sini. Kita kena lukis lah table union. Union dengan employee. Kan, dengan employee. So, kita dia ada relationship dengan employee. So, kita letak di sebelah ni lah. Okay, di sini. We name it as union. Okay, and then kita ada union code. Okay, union code. Ini sebagai uh, sebagai uh, primary key lah. Uh, sorry, primary key. Union code primary key. And then uh, kita masuk sini, ini kod primary key dia adalah uh, union kod okay. and then dia punya attributes adalah union description description, alright so yang tak terlibat tu kita delete delete delete, ok so kita ada table union and then kita create relationship untuk uh, post table ok union relationship dengan dengan employee ok ok so employee eh so, saya kecil sikit ok so employee alright so kita baca balik statement dia Okay, all airport employees, okay, dia ada S di situ, belong to a specific union. Okay, so kita, M, kita nak test the relationship. And then union. All employees, many. Oh, sorry. Belong to a union kan? Uh, so, sini akan jadi one. Okay, so many to one. 
A union may be joined And then dia bagi lagi statement A union may be joined by many members So A union here Adalah many lah kan? Many oh, Sorry many pula one okay. A union So union one A union one May be joined by many members Many members sini many So sini akan jadi many Ini akan jadi one So relationship dia kita tahu lah uh, Employees many Union one. So, di, di line ni kita boleh lah setkan dia. Uh, employee many kan. Many. Uh, then, union code is one. One. Okay. But, don't forget. Okay. Don't forget that we have the keyword here. Maybe. May be joined by many members. Meaning, employee ni boleh jadi the join atau tak. So, the employee ni akan jadi as optional lah. Okay. Employee ni ada kebebas. Uh, sorry. Tak tak semestinya join. Dia may be. So, the, the employee ni perlu jadi optional. Bila optional, kita kena letakkan lambang. Uh, dekat crow foot ni, dia ada macam lambang zero sih kan. So, kita kena ubah lah. Dia punya menu ni kita ubah ke lambang crow yang ada zero ni. Oh, this one. Okay. Okay, saya 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 maksimal. So, di sini kita tahu. Oh, uh, un employee maybe. Maybe join union. Okay, so that's it lah. Saya maksimal sikit. Okay. Oh, ni, lambang uh, optional. Untuk crow food dia ada bulat ni. So, kita tahu. Employee ni tak semestinya join union. Dia maybe. So, dia optional. So, di sini optional lah. Okay. And then. Uh, okay. So, memandangkan dia ada relationship. So, kita perlu letakkan foreign key lah kepada salah satu table tersebut. Okay. So, foreign key untuk table ni uh, kita tengok. Employee yang ada many. So, bila employee many, meaning that employee lah yang perlu ada foreign code. So, kita tambahkan lagi. Foreign code ni adalah Kena tambah foreign code union uh, code ni di table employee. Okay. Saya dah reset sikit. Boleh kecil kan? Kerja okay, saya tambah sini, kita adjust. Okay, so di sini kita ada uh, uh, union code underscore code akan menjadi foreign key, fake foreign key FK untuk union sebab dia ada relationship. So di sini kita ada data. Okay, ini kita nak buat sikit saya just sebab berlaku pertambahan pertambahan attribute jadi size dia lari sikit Okay, so we have it like this lah. Okay. 
uh, ini adalah untuk relationship between union and foreign uh, sorry dengan employee so memandangkan di employee ni ada many so many ni akan ada foreign key lah untuk table union ni ok alright so settle untuk tu next kita tengok lagi what else hmm, ok airport lah hmm. the airport uh, run several tests several number of tests on the airplanes to check and to make sure that the airplanes are still airworthy Okay, the tests are run periodically and conducted by the airport technicians. One airport technician may conduct one or many tests. Ah, ini keyword lah. Okay, may conduct one or many tests uh, on airplanes. The tests on the airplane may be conducted by many technicians at one time. Ah, sini dah ada big keyword lah untuk menetapkan apakah type of relationship. Okay, so kita sini kita draw lah. Kita tengok, oh, test ada relationship dengan technician. Okay, so kita kena draw bawah technician ni lah. Okay. Okay, but then first let us test the relationship. Kita tengok dulu relationship dia macam mana. Okay. Tengok dulu, uh, dia cakap technician dengan test. Okay. So, ini kita tak underline. Okay, kita tengok lah. Dia cakap macam mana? Kenyataan dia. Uh, one airport technician may conduct one or many tests on the airplane. So, sini technician boleh jadi one. Technician boleh jadi one to conduct. Uh, many test, one or many test uh, so jadi many lah di sini okay, one or many on the airplane, the test on the airplane may be conducted by many technicians at one time uh, the the test on the airplane may be conducted by many technicians at one time Okay, so maksudnya di sini uh, the test on airplane may be conducted by many technicians at one time. So, test ni kalau satu kalau satu-satu masa a time can be conducted by many technicians pula. Many technicians. Okay. Oh. Many technicians. Meaning sini many. Okay. Okay, so bila dia jadi macam ni kan bila macam ni Uh, result dia adalah macam kali lah, macam darab kan. One multiply with many. Akan jadi many. Many multiply with one. Jadi many. So, secara tak langsung relationship between technicians and test ni jadi many. Many to many. Kan? Jadi many to many. So, bila many to many, kita kena create bridge table. Uh, create bridge table. So, where does this bridge table comes? So, bridge table come ni adalah daripada testing ni lah. Table testing ni. Okay. Testing activity. Okay. Sebab tu kita tengok kenapa macam sebelum ni kenapa ada table testing. Kenapa testing ni jadi entity kan. Kita nampak macam pelik awak kenapa tak termasuk dalam entity test. Rupa-rupanya apa kita tahu bila kita test relationship tu. Oh, relationship between technician and test adalah many to many. So, bila many to many kita kena create bridge table. Okay. So, secara ini kita tahu oh bridge table ni adalah testing lah. Okay. Sebab tu dan testing ada dia punya attribute ni. Dia punya attribute ni untuk, untuk store attribute semasa testing tu dijalankan. So, kita tambah. Okay, testing ni akan jadi one lah. One test. Sorry, technician jadi one. Oh, sorry. Di sini kita tambah technician. Uh, testing. And D. Okay. Okay, kita tambah testing sebuah middle ataupun bridge. So, bila di bridge ni, dia perlu jadi many. Untuk cover many. Many ke one. So, this is the relationship lah. The new relationship comprised of this technician table, uh, testing table as the bridge table and then the test table. Uh, 
So dia sini oh kita tahu alright. So now we know the table the correct table with its correct relationship. Okay, next let's click the, the table lah. So we create table test first. Okay, test first. So kita tahu ada testing di middle kita tak pause sikit. Okay, so test here. Test and then the main fikir adalah test num. Num. And then dia punya attribute adalah test name match score. Test name match score. Test name make score. So, kita dapat dah di sini. Alright. So, yang ni tak relate. Kita delete. Okay, next table is uh, table testing. Testing kita ada uh, first kita ada testing date. Testing date. Then, kita ada testing hours. And then kita ada testing score. Okay, so testing score. Okay, so memandangkan testing ni adalah bridge kepada technician dan juga uh, test punya table. So, dia kena ada relationship between these two. So, untuk ada relationship tu, dia kena ada PKFK. Okay. PKFK. Saya tambahkan sini. PK1 FK1. Okay. Jadi, PKFK1 PK1 FK1 ni dia akan ambil daripada technician first. Okay. So, kita ambil SSN lah. Okay. SSN. Social security number. Sebagai PK1 FK1. Next, kita ada untuk table test pula PK2 FK2 ok ok PK2 F2 FK2 adalah test ni so, PK dari table test di bawah ni so we have kita kita tahu lah ok so dah ada ni kita dah ada connection lah So, from here, we can create the line. Okay. Click the line and then click the line here. Okay, so kita ada ada, ada relationship lah. Ni kita tengok pula dia punya uh, apa? Dia punya relationship ni uh, one to many and then optional or mandatory. Okay. Optional or mandatory. Tadi I'm not mistaken kita ada word may kan. Kita ada word may. Uh, okay, this one. Okay, one a potential may conduct, may conduct one or many tests. Okay, so maksudnya di bahagian testing ni lah, okay, daripada technician ni, untuk testing ni dia akan jadi optional lah, okay, dia boleh conduct one or many tests. Okay, so di technician akan jadi uh, mandatory. Oh, dia terbalik. Di technician akan jadi mandatory mana This one. Okay, untuk testing akan jadi optional lah. Many kan, one to many. So, dia akan jadi optional. Okay, sekejap-sekejap saya max recess ke besar sikit. 
And then untuk testing ke test ni tidak dinyatakan sangat apakah whether dia optional or not so we assume that it's mandatory lah. Okay so disebabkan the bridge table ni dia jadi many lah raw food. Sorry to the play. Untuk test one and then to untuk testing dia many. Okay. So saya maximize. Okay, so boleh nampak. Okay, technician may test uh, one or many testing. Okay, uh, ini many to one relationship sebab dia tak nyatakan optional or not. Tak ada perkataan may ataupun optional. Jadi, kita letakkan dia mandatory. Many to one. Okay, so that's it. Kita sudah ada, kita ada beberapa tiba. Alright, so we have created 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so kesemua uh, 8 table have been created. Okay, semua table sudah di create berserta dia punya attribute dan dia punya relationship. But if you look here, uh, aeroplane, eh, airplane and model still tergantung, tak terlibat di sini. Okay, ini adalah ERD, entity relationship model, extended Entity, entity relationship model maksudnya semua ni mesti ada relationship tak boleh ada tinggal tergantung di sini so airplane ada terlibat dengan kalau kita tengok uh, airplane the airport run several number of tests on airplanes okay run several number numbers of tests on the airplanes Okay, so di sini kita letak lah. Okay, airplane lah. Airplane di sini kita letak uh, dengan test sebab dia test kan. Okay, so na the airport run several numbers of tests. Okay, untuk test banyak. On the airplanes, airplanes pun banyak. Okay, so we have got the new many to many relationship. Many airplanes run many tests. Okay. So many too many of course cannot. Okay, so we cannot uh, do that. Meaning that uh, in order to get to the test, uh, airplane need to go through the testing. Okay, the testing tables too. So, airplane need to go through testing table in order as the bridge as the bridge table. Okay. So, sini akan jadi one many one. So, that's it lah. Okay. So, airplane go to testing and then testing go to test. So, that will be the solution lah for this case study. So, we go back to here we have a plane model a plane and model so we have to put relationship to the testing table okay. Okay. So we have here uh, a relationship of one to many, many to one, many to one, one to many. Okay. So ini akan jadi one lah. Okay. Kat line ni set to memandangkan. Okay. Ini many. Okay. Kalau kita tengok statement ni. 
statement ni dia tak menyatakan may ataupun optional meaning kita consider dia sebagai mandatory so we don't need to put optional here lah ok so now we have completed the EERM for this case study ok if you look all of this entity <coughs> has their relationship ok with another table oh ok one more thing uh, since this is the relationship Okay, we have relationship between airplane and testing table. <coughs> we need to update the foreign key. Okay, PK and foreign key here. Okay, so this is the bridge table. Meaning we need to add the third PK and FK3. FK3. And then we need to update the uh, registration number here. Okay, so this is the, the latest one lah. Okay. <coughs> the latest one uh, of our ERD, ERM. I want to make this, the line look uh, solid. So, we have completed all of this. Okay, but I want to, sorry, I want to update. I want to update the the attribute here first before I forget. Uh, testing, we have what? SSN star SNAM. Sorry, star. N registration number. So all of this will be primary key and foreign key. So I, I need to add a line. The line, okay. Oh. Test number, the line. So at the employee here i need to add union code okay union code and then start as the foreign key okay so that's it uh, we have completed the relationship but actually there's still uh, one more things that is missing okay which is the the name of the relationship okay we know we have the line and then we have the monetary optional and then the subtype, disjoint and so on but we we are missing the name of the relationship ok so kita kena letak lah ok so kalau kamu baca kepada statement tadi case study tu untuk employee dengan union ni dia adalah join ok so kita namakan lah kita namakan relationship ni as join ok employee may join a union ok sebab one each union may be joined by employee. So that's it lah. Okay. And then technician. Technician, what it do for the testing is uh, it conduct. Conduct. Technician conduct testing. So we name it as conduct. Okay. Technician, a technician may conduct one or more testing. Okay. So ada option sini. Okay. So next for test for test is uh, testing okay, the process of testing uh, use test use uh. use okay. testing use test okay which test it's use okay. testing ni dia menggunakan test yang mana that's what it means Okay, so that's the relationship between testing and test. Next, uh, kita tengok airplane dengan model lah. Uh, airplane has models kan? Has airplane. Um, a number of airplanes model and each model is identified by a model number. Identified pun boleh ataupun... Uh, has pun boleh lah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, kita namakan identify. Airplane identify based on the model where it has model number. And then airplane tadi untuk testing ni uh, tested lah. Okay, tested. Okay, kita tested. Okay, so this is it. We have name all of the relationship already. Okay, ini untuk subtype. Subtype the special case. Dia ada punya hierarchy dia. Okay, this is the component that we need to put when we involve with specialization hierarchy. Okay, kena ada whether it's disjoint or overlap and then whether it's complete or partial and then kena ada dia punya discriminator TC or T. Okay, kalau dia, dia overlap. Kalau dia overlap, kita tak boleh letak satu saja discriminator. Kita kena letak dua. Sama ada this one and this one. Kena letak dua. Untuk attribute discriminator. Okay. Yang ni kamu refer lah dalam slide note. EERM nanti. Okay. So basically here we already have our complete EERM based on the case study. Okay. Okay. Uh, saya akan upload lah jawapan ni untuk kamu refer berserta video ni. Hopefully kamu boleh refer balik lah and then try to learn something. Kalau ada yang tak faham, kamu boleh tanya saya, okay? And then, but the question is not finished there yet. We have two question. Okay, we just completed the first one, the A. Okay, baru boleh jawab. 60 marks. We have another balance, 4 marks. Okay, rugi lah kalau tambah. Sebab soalan dia simple saja. compare to A ni. List two examples of reports that can be produced from this database system. Bila mana dia mengatakan report adalah uh, apakah benda ataupun SQL statement yang kamu bila kamu run dia boleh show something kan. Macam sebenarnya kita dah buat latihan lah uh, menggunakan SQL statement untuk show sesuatu. Okay. Sama ada select all from table ataupun select specific things that you want to know based on the tables or database that you just created. Okay so soalan ni basically dia tanya, berdasarkan SQL tu, apakah yang kamu boleh, report apa yang kamu boleh tunjuk? Berdasarkan table ni lah, melalui uh, SQL statement yang kamu boleh run. Okay, so kalau kamu tengok sini, uh, kita boleh display uh, a report of list test done by airplane. Okay, kita airplane di sini kan, and then model. And then kita boleh display. Uh, a report of list of tests done for airplane. Okay, sebab kita ada kita ada table testing, table technician, table test airplane. So, kita boleh, boleh tahu lah airplane mana yang dah di test and then generate report tu. Uh, sorry, generate table report tu. Okay. So, salah satunya adalah kita boleh generate a report of list of tests done for airplane. Let me type here. So, ini untuk question B ya. First, we can generate a, a report of list of tests done for airplane. Okay. So, kita boleh run SQL statement untuk dapatkan report list of tests done for airplane ni. Okay. Ini apa yang dimasukkan. Second one is uh, we also can get uh, from table we can also get okay this one uh, a number of employee join for each union okay berapakah bilangan employee ataupun siapakah employee yang join union yang mana kita boleh dapatkan okay sebab kita ada dua ni okay so kita boleh run SQL statement untuk dapatkan berapakah bilangan employee ataupun siapakah employee yang join union yang mana-mana so we can get number of employee join employee join uh, the union lah sebab can be one or many okay ataupun kalau kamu ada specific nama union tu ada specific nama kamu boleh boleh lah letakkan nama dia okay a number of employee meaning kamu kena select count and then employee and then union kalau ada specific union kamu letakkan nama union tu okay 
Alright, so basically, uh, this is how we can answer the question for the case study. Okay, I hope you can use my video explanation as your guideline uh, to answer this kind of question. Okay, so saya dah bagi video ni, saya harap untuk menjawab second uh, question for case study, saya boleh menjadi panduan kamu lah untuk menjawab case study yang kedua saya bagi tu so kita akan discuss tu later on in our next class okay so if you have any question or things that you don't understand you can pm me to ask uh, your question okay so thank you everyone